Scratch and Epic Pie Time, Epic Wood Time, Musicians of Ponyville Shopping Shenanigans, Pony Rock Anthem, and Little Pip in the upcoming radio play of Fallout Equestria. Please welcome Jesse Nowak. Hi. Oh, sweet. Thank you. Sup? <laughs> so. <laughs> Should I say hi to people or what? Yeah. Okay. Hi. Everyone enjoying the uh, convention so far? Yeah. Yes? Because if you said no, I, I would have kicked you out. So that's good that you said yes. Um, what's going on, you guys? Not much. I'm just chilling. Good. Enjoying that's good. Enjoying some wubby music today. Wub, wubbiful. Yep. Wubbiful music. Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the wub? There was a wub cannon? Did you see the there was. I got a picture with it. It was wonderful. It? Yes. I, um... I think I like Googled or not Googled. I went on DeviantArt, searched Epic Web Time, and there were actually pictures of a vinyl scratch with a, a base cannon cosplaying, and I was like, "That's so cool!" Ah. Uh, yes, you'll have to get one eventually. <clears throat> so, as you know, I'm DJ Shamrock. This is Jesse Nowak, and uh, you've done all kinds of voices. Your your thing in the uh, your your brief description here in the pamphlet um, has said you've been acting, doing voice acting and stuff for quite a while now, right? Yeah. About about how long would you say? Um, for voice acting, I've been doing it for four years. But for acting, I've been doing it since I was like six. And what kinds of um, what kinds of things have you have you acted in? Like when you were younger, uh, what got you into that? And what sort of things have you done? Um, I mainly did musical theater when I was younger, and I um, I went to this thing called Pittsburgh Musical Theater. I used to live in Pennsylvania, and it was basically like school but for in the summer and musical stuff so you know you had this class singing at 9 a.m to 10 and then blah 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 and then you put on a musical at the end so since I did that like once a year I've been in like 14 musicals or something like that and like three plays so that um I think when I was five I went to see Annie on Broadway or something with my mom and like I was like I want to be Annie eh, so, uh, my mom was like well you'll you know why don't we give it a shot so we Joshi enrolled me in Pittsburgh Musical Theater and I excelled at that so I just kept doing it and it was fun awesome awesome um so you mentioned musicals now um are what sort of uh you've done vocals and stuff you're a singer and so what sort of have you done any songs in the in the fandom at all or anything like that or are you planning on getting involved in that sort of thing? Tell us a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, let's see. The first pony song I ever did was Pony Rock Anthem with Shady Vox and uh, Breathe Faith VA, so that was really fun. Um, and then I believe I did. Uh, well, I met uh, I Be a Brony rapper and Omni Pony at BronyCon this year. And uh, they're really, really awesome dudes, and we just hit it off. And we, um, they asked if I wanted to collab with them, so we did a song called Amplifier that came out, I think, a month ago. And um, I think that was decent. And um, those guys are really talented. Love them. What else? I'm doing a song right now with um, Bagpipe Brony and Ellie Monty that I'm not sure if I'm allowed to talk about, but that's coming out really well. And I think that's it right now. Cool, yeah, definitely. All those are uh, cool guys. Omni Pony's a cool guy, and uh, Bagpipe Rep have done a couple songs myself with him. So he's he's cool, and uh, always always love working with him. Um, he always has some very interesting musical styles that he likes to do, like a lot of German. St- is it a German sort of bass song, or if I'm you can s- say? I'm not certain, actually. Okay. I know All he right. does fun stuff, though, like the cheerly, like, 80s thing. That was mm-hmm. really cool. Yeah, yeah. He's done all kinds of crazy things. Um, <clears throat> so a little bit more on what you've done uh, within the fandom voice acting-wise. Of course, everybody here knows you probably from Epic Web Time as Vinyl Scratch. Um, yes, you can clap for that if you want. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> and... Um, uh, I know that you're also working with uh, Fallout Equestria, the radio play, who I'm we're associated with because we're going to play their sort of stream things on the on uh, Celestia Radio. Uh, tell us a bit about each of the different uh, fandom-based either 
um, sort of video projects or radio play projects you've been involved in, and um, a little bit about future projects that you might sort of be getting into. So, sure. Let's see. Uh, Follow Equestria. I um, that was the first pony like fan fiction I had ever written. I mean, written, <laughs> read. I did not write that. Wish I had. But um, because like. You know, I was like, oh no, if pony and fan fiction are in the same sentence, I don't want to have anything to do with it. <laughs> but I thought it was, you know, all, you know, explicit stuff. But then uh, I got the audition for Fallout Equestria. And every, it was, you know, it was a guy called uh, Radio Hooves who sent me a message. And normally when people request my voice, it's like, hi, can you be in my series? Okay, here are all the lines. Okay, thank you, gay. And this was all, you know, perfect English and nice little paragraphs. And I was like, you know what? Okay, I will give it a shot because you are a very nice person. And so uh, I looked over the audition sheet and um, I read chapter one. And then, you know, like, Little Pip has some questionable dialogue, you know, like, it, like I think audition line number seven was Luna's, like, title mayor heat or something. And I was like, oh God, what have I gotten myself into? But uh, the story is really well written, and I really love Little Pip to death, so it's really cool I get to voice her in that. Um, what was the rest of the question? So, like, <laughs> did we talk about different, uh, like, talk about the Epic Time series. Talk about that a little bit, like, what that's been like. What sure. Uh, yeah, Epic Blank Times have been, like, really awesome to work on. I, um, I do a series, I write a series and voice in called uh, Pokemon Bridged. And uh, Rob Bob, ee, Rob Bob uh, knew me from that, so he added me on Skype, and he was like, you know, he, Rob's really nice. He just likes to know everyone, you know. So uh, we got to know each other, and he was like, hey, you're into ponies too, right? Like, do you want to give this a look over? And he sent me the scripts for Epic Cupcake Time, and I was like, oh my god, this is gonna be good if you do it right, man. This is really good. <laughs> and um, so that came out, and it was really good, and he did it right. <laughs> And then um, Epic Pie Time was written, and he sent me the script. And I was like, oh, this, you know, this is really good, too. Oh, look, you know, vinyl scratches in there. It's cool. And he's like, yeah, I think it's going to be a good uh, you know, addition of vinyls in there. And I was like, well, if you ever like, need her to do a line, then I, I'm totally free to do it. And he's like, yeah. Actually, yeah, I think your voice would really fit her well. And I was like, really? Oh, okay, sure. So... Um, I think a couple weeks went by, and they wrote, they threw her a line, and so I recorded that, and then it like exploded. <laughs> so people tend, so people liked her, so um, they decided to do Epic Web Time, and that was really awesome too. And now we're doing a, um, we're do. They brought me on as a uh, writer also for Alligator in the Tub, so that's really cool. I get to write some stuff, cause um, I. Uh, I can't exactly remember the what I suggested, but I suggested some things for web time, and we uh, switched it based on that. I think I'm trying to remember what it is. I suggested the the cider crushing on her head, and then I didn't know she was going to throw it in the fire, so I was like, ah. <laughs> so um, so that's fun. I, and now we're writing. Um, Robin, and I met for the first time in real life at BronyCon. And we were going to, um, I think, Walmart to like pick up waters or something. And we thought of a um, vinyl Octavia thing that involved shopping there. And so we got back from BronyCon and like knocked out the script. And so that's in uh, animation right now. I'm not sure when it's going to come out because we have bigger stuff working on. But that's it's a short. So yeah. Anything else? <laughs> yes. Okay. Um. <clears throat> now. Is there is there anything you're still doing? Obviously, you're into the pony thing right now. And is there anything outside of that you're still doing in terms of voice acting wise? Or are you pretty much like all in, like only pony stuff right now that you're doing voice acting wise? Uh, actually, I'm um, pony stuff is just it's becoming more of what I'm doing because I have a little sheet where I write down do these lines and stuff, and most of it is consisting of pony stuff right now. So. Um, I'm, I'm, I do a lot of parody work, though, too. I'm still scripting Pokemon Bridged and uh, voicing in that. And I also voice uh, Saris in Helsinki Bridged by Team Four Star. And so that's getting an episode each year. So that's cool. <laughs> um, what else? Uh, 
<laughs> I I think that's uh, it. Just parody work and um, bony stuff. <laughs> uh, and now a few sort of uh, miscellaneous questions that my uh, Listeners on Celestia Radio would, would sort of hit me if I didn't ask these. Uh, it's u- ones we usually ask to every interview person we talk to. Um, one of them is, is always requested every time. It's usually the first interview question I get asked to ask someone. Um, and it's not the one you would think. It's, what is your favorite kind of muffin? That might be the hardest question I've ever been asked. <laughs> Can't pick favorites. <laughs> well, except two. If there's a tie for two. Except two. I really like pumpkin muffins if they're done right. And chocolate chip. No? Blueberry. No, chocolate chip. Chocolate chip blueberry. You know, some fruits like that go really well with chocolate, like strawberries. So somebody get on that. A strawberry muffin? I don't know. We'll try. We'll try. Someone do that. <laughs> Somebody do that. <laughs> um, okay, so that's, that's one. Um, obviously, you may be a little bit impartial, depending on what, what voice acting stuff all you've done, but uh, the next question is pretty obvious. Uh, it's a two-part question. Uh, who is your favorite of the main six, and who is your favorite pony overall, can be main six or otherwise? Um, my favorite main six is Rainbow Dash. Yeah! <laughs> <Woo! laughs> um, hmm. Discord is really fun villain. He's really cool. I'm not sure he would be my favorite like character overall. Like I can't. The thing about uh, friendship is magic is that it has so many good characters that like I can't like choose my favorite overall like definitely rainbow dash is my favorite of the main six but i don't know discord's my favorite villain okay that works <laughs> that works um and do you i mean you you voice act vinyl scratch do you is she like up there for you is she really up in the in the top for you or well that's hard to tell because in the actual series she appears from maybe in season one and two, probably appears a total of 14 seconds, you know? And she doesn't speak, and she doesn't... While as Rainbow Dash has two seasons to talk and develop character and, you know, all that. So if I was going by wub time, that still isn't fair because she's only had maybe five minutes. So I can't really compare them. People ask me, like, do you like Vinyl or Rainbow Dash better? And I, I can't choose because it'd really be unfair, you know? Okay, um, uh, going back to uh, voice acting, now that we've sort of got those out of the way, and you made the correct choice on the main six, by the way, Rainbow Dash. Um, and uh, I, I want to talk a little bit about, w- within the fandom, auditioning, voice acting, that sort of thing. For people who want to get into that, um, what would you recommend to them, just sort of a quick list of things of like do's and don'ts, um, when they're auditioning for stuff or they're going out to talk to people about auditioning um, and what it's been like for you in different auditions, like if you've gotten the part or if you haven't gotten, if you didn't get the part, you know, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with having other people that, you know, voice act the same characters that you do in different series? Um, if you're going to get in voice acting, definitely do it because you want to do it like to have fun. You know, not because you want to be internet famous or something like that, because internet fame doesn't count for, like, anything out in the real world, you know, like, and if you go for that, you, like, will not succeed. It's pretty much, like, a 90% chance you won't succeed, Um, because, you know, if you won't have, like, the passion for it, you'll just be obsessed with getting up there that you never will, you know. Um, For auditions, uh, as an actor, like, you really need to have thick skin, I think, because you really do not get a lot of you you don't uh, get the parts for a lot of auditions you do and I go into an audition thinking that I'm not going to get the role but I want to have as much fun as I possibly can with the audition and that's gotten me a lot of roles Um, just uh, practice and do it because you like it okay Um, now 
I, I usually, for the most part, stay away from getting involved with um, like fan and conflicts and things like that, or like you know, oh, this is this person's voice, or you know, this person, this one should sound this way, or you should have had this person. Um, how do you how do you approach that with other people? Obviously, you know, I would, um, you know. We've known each other for a little while. Uh, we haven't talked too much, uh, but we're also good friends with, of course, the Vinyl Scratch Tapes crew, who does the radio play for that, and uh, Hannah Kay, who does the, or um, Hannah, who does the voice of vinyl for them. How, um, I, don't, I don't know if you interact with other people to do the same voices that you've ever done. Um, do you get along with them? Are there any issues that ever come up? Do you have people ask you or even, you know, you or berate other people they're like no it should have been this voice or no it should have been that one because i know that that happens a lot and that it's it's something kind of that needs to be addressed you know yeah some people have like they're really intense on their head cannon so if the voice doesn't sound like that then they are wrong you know they're like it can't sound like that it has to sound like what i think it does you know and uh yeah, hopefully they adjust to that, you know, and give it a chance. Can you know. we do a clone story? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, what else? Oh, um, yeah, I really enjoy the vinyl scratch tapes. I've never met the vinyl from um, there, but I think we'd get along really well from what I've heard about her. So I'd love to meet her. Uh, I hang out with, uh, I chill with Wolfie sometimes on Skype, who does Octavia. Um, it's funny because I have never actually uh, talked to or met the Octavia from Web Time, and yet I hang with Wolfie. <laughs> so that's interesting. Um, I, I uh, think we could all just get along because we're all, you know, voice actors. We're all, you know, trying to entertain. So we're not, like, against each other, you know. So I don't have a problem with anyone. Cool, cool. That's a, a, a good note there. Um, We'll sort of uh, take a moment here to uh, sort of do a timeout from the interview and do sort of a general Q&A. So for people that have any questions uh, for Ms. Uh, Nowak, uh, raise your hands and we'll sort of call on you and answer your questions. This guy. Come on up. Yell. Or you can come up here, I guess. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I was wondering, um, like, is it easy to voice act? Because I'm kind of trying to get into it, but it's kind of difficult to adjust my voice sometimes. Yeah. Um, voice acting and acting are, like, totally different uh, in styles and stuff, and I can't really tell which one I like better. But acting really helps me with my voice acting. So if maybe... Uh, uh, are you in uh, school right now or anything? Kind of. Sort of. Um, if there are any like productions that they're doing, I'd recommend getting involved with that. Like even if you're just stage crew, watching actors like really helps. Like I would totally just if I could not have a job, I would just chill on sets and just watch actors all day because like I'm fascinated by characters and stuff like that. And as a voice actor, that's you know essential. Um, I'd be careful where you get information, but just Google how to be a voice actor, and you might get some uh, useful information out of that. And um, if you uh, have some friends that are uh, into voice acting, or maybe you want to just ask their honest opinion, uh, I'd get maybe like five opinions, though, on a certain take, because just one, you don't want to go off just one, you know, because that might just be their opinion of stuff, of whether your voice is the right pitch or right inflection or stuff. So just... Search around, put your feet in the water, see what's up. All right, thank you. Welcome. Any other questions? Okay, uh, I'll get to you in a sec. We'll go with snacks first here, so. Come up here, good sir. Hi there. So it occurred to me, um, I, I hear occasionally animators will actually act out what they're animating before they actually animate it. And I was wondering if you ever employed similar techniques when you were doing any voice acting. Um, yeah, actually, for, um, for Vinylize especially, she's very high energy and very expressive. So if she's saying, yeah, I'll like 
pump my fist in the air and stuff like that. And um, like for the yelling, uh, when she's yelling over the dishwasher, I kind of plugged my ears. I was like, these dishes are really loud. And you know, so physical stuff really helps with uh, uh, voice acting sometimes. <laughs> Welcome. This guy. Uh, before I ask my question, um, first picture. <laughs> All right. Um, uh, uh, what is the strangest voice you've ever done at all in during your voice acting career? That's tough. Uh, strange, I think, would... Mm, I guess the strangest quality would be Max from Pokemon Bridge because I was, you know, imitating the actual Max from Pokemon. So it's like... Um, it, and I also tried going a little too high sometimes if I try to do Max. It goes, like, into Nurse Joy territory. I don't even know if you know about Pokemon Bridge. Nurse Joy sounds like this. <laughs> but Max is like this. Mao May. So sometimes it goes a little too high, and it sounds like Nurse Joy, so I have to redo it. So that, that'd be, like, the strangest I think I've done. Question here in the back. Come on up. Come on down. If you can remember this, you are old. Sorry, I can't remember that. So, um, a question I've always wondered is exactly with voice acting careers, it seems like a very tough business to jump into. I've been wanting to do it for a while. Uh, what outlets does one go through to actually get in on the business? I mean, like, is it advertisers? Is it certain agencies? Where would you go to start? That's the biggest problem, I think, with this kind of line of work. And uh, I've been wanting to jump into it since I was about maybe 12, and I'm not quite sure where to begin. Do you have any ideas? Uh, yeah. Um, I don't have an agent or anything, but... Um I'm hoping to maybe get some. I'm sending out demos and stuff. Um, I get this question a lot, and it sucks because I can't give you a better answer because I really don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah, I just sort of do my own thing, and um, I started producing my own parodies, and that's how people knew about my voice. And then people asked me to be in their stuff, so I really just sit around <laughs> and wait for people to ask me to do stuff. And I got a line out the door for lines I got to do. So I... More or less jump in with what you have to offer. Stuff yeah. Things out. Yeah, what I would recommend is make your own stuff. You know, like voice acts, your own stuff. Do, like, okay. fan dubs or stuff I'm like that. Doing a reading of one pick that I really like. Sure, so go for it. Gone. Yeah. Anthropology, baby! <laughs> Come on. Oh. Oh. Uh, so just do your own thing, and I think people will, like, take notice, you know? Which one? Who'd you see first? Oh, Rainbow Dash hat first, and then we'll get to you. And then what? Okay. Uh, just two actual quick questions. Um, first of all is, are you looking forward to any parts in Fallout Equestria that you're really looking forward to do? And also, what would be your favorite character in Fallout Equestria? Sure, let's see. Favorite part? Uh, I love crazy characters. I love, like, you know, evil crazy characters. And I don't want to, like, spoil anything, but there is a scene in Fallout Equestria where Pip just goes bonkers for, like, a little part, and I'm really excited to do that. Yeah, I'm really excited to do that. That's I'm just going to go crazy with that. Um, favorite character? Let's see. I'm trying to remember because I've been reading uh, Project Horizons recently, and so I'm thinking of characters. It, it counts? Ooh. That's, that's even harder. Ah. It's rare that I pick the you know, main character of a story to be my favorite, but I really love Blackjack. She's really, really cool character. And I really love Little Pip, too. 
You know who else? Uh, I'm blanking on her name. It's um, the red zebra uh, character in uh, Project Horizons. Rampage. Rampage. Rampage is really cool. She's really fun. Uh, if I, if there were to be a Project uh, Horizon reading and I wouldn't play Backjack, I would want to play Rampage because she's really fun and uh, I, I love her. She's cool. Okay, so we'll do Fallen first and then we'll get to the Fluttershy person in the back. Um, actually... I'm doing some voice acting work for a friend, and I'm playing Spot the Diamond Dog, and that really tears up my voice when I do it. Do you have any tips to, like, help that? I mean, I don't know how to worry about it. Yeah, when I first started doing, like, rough voices, like, I do uh, Luffy from One Piece for a bunch of parodies and stuff, and that really, like, wears on you. Like, I could only do, like, half of a... Maybe like one page of a script or two pages before I was like, ah, I need to take a break for the day. Um, I guess I would just recommend the more you do it, the easier it is to do. Because I first started with him two years ago, and now I can go for like, you know, six pages or stuff like that. Um, tea is good. Tea with honey. I hate tea, but like you have to drink it sometimes if you want. Yeah, perfect. Put put honey in it. All right. Thank you very much. No problem. All right, Fluttershy in the back, I believe, has a question. Oh, Bob Barker. How is it working with all the big names on the internet like Team Four Star and all of them? It's really cool. It's like when I first started out, I looked up to all these people, you know, and, uh, you know, Team Four Star, Lil Karibo, and now I'm, like, actually voicing in things that they produce or they're, you know, doing, and it's, it, like, dawns on me sometimes where I'm just, like, you know, I'm, like, chilling on the couch, and all of a sudden, like, oh, my God, I'm voicing in this thing, (laughs) and I just, like, feel really proud of myself for, like, a minute. Um, Like, uh, I think when it really hit me was when uh, I started actually voice acting because of um, Naruto Bridged by Vegeta3986 and uh, Masako X. And so I'd always look up to Masako, who's like a um, big idol of mine. And then uh, time went around for him to do his camp for Abridged, and he asked, me, he asked me to voice Sakura. And I was like, oh my god, this is so cool. Little Jesse would be like freaking out about this. <laughs> so it's really cool. They're really nice guys. Welcome. Uh, two questions. I'm drawing a blank right now. Uh, who's your fo- favorite voice actor? Overall. <laughs> well, yell really loud. Um, that's tough. I really like, um, let's see, Tara Strong is like everyone's favorite. I love her. She's great. Um, I also really like the, um, the, the females that voice on friendship is magic like all of them are just really incredible like there's not a weak pick of any of them and i find that really awesome for a show those are nice mine's uh morgan freeman (laughs) yeah (laughs) that's voice actor also one more um what's your favorite quote from all the works you did yeah Uh, that's tough wow (laughs) Um, pretty much anything like Misty says in Pokemon Bridged is wonderful. Uh, <laughs> um, vinyl, yeah, vinyl is really fun. Lines too. Um, I'll just say it because everyone probably wants me to, and I'm too embarrassed to like just do it on my own. Let's see. Um, <clears throat> oh, it's nothing special. It's just my base cannon. <laughs> <laughs> I get a rush from that. <laughs> yeah, let's flip some tables. <laughs> Anyone else? Questions? Did it? Oh, yes, you. 
<laughs> so this this might be a, a bit of a um, a difficult question, but if the show were to give a canon personality to Vinyl Scratch, kind of the way that they did with Derby Hooves, um, how would you react with your role as voice acting Vinyl Scratch? Would you try to keep it the same as what it was previously, or would you adapt it more to the show? Ooh, let's see. I think for like web time and how I portray vinyl, I think I would keep doing her the same because I I like the personality we've given her. You know, um, I think it really fits her. If there was like a canon role, I think it might be funny if we like did a short where like I voiced the canon role and web time and they met each other. That might be kind of fun <laughs> if I could awesome. imitate that. <laughs> um, but you know, it when you take on a role that is a character that hasn't spoken yet and they have potential to speak, you have to accept the risk that, like, some... It might, like, turn out nothing like it, but, you know, it's, it's just a little thing on the Internet, you know, so... Yeah. Thank you. I think that, um... I think most voice acting people would say that, that they would keep the voice the same, um, because, you know, with that, you don't want to... We have this conflict between now fan and a canon, but you got to remember, well, it's a fan and project anyway so you might as well keep it the same um i'm trying to think there was something else i wanted to address as well <sighs> now i can't remember what i was going to ask something something 20 percent. i don't know um <laughs> any other questions mm, yes you maybe i'll think of it yeah, Jesse, do you do any singing other than just doing, like, voice acting? Do you do any, any singing lines? Uh, you mean as vinyl? Or? Just any, any of that or any of the other lines that you need or singing? Or just... Yeah, uh, in some roles I sing. Like, for um, Pokemon Bridge, there was a gap between episodes, and so I heard the song and I really wanted to do a song parody because Pokemon Bridge hasn't had a song parody yet. So I was like, can you guys mind if I like write something? And they were like, go for it because Mike doesn't know about music and Jerry's always busy. So I just wrote it, I knocked it out, and I'm recording the demo right now. Uh, so that's fun. Um, yep. Mm, yeah, I also sang the backing vocals on Pony Rock Anthem. And um, yeah, so... Um, I think that's all that's like out right now, but I've um, been singing for a while. And also the bagpipe uh, brony uh, song that I'm working on with Ellie Monty, I sing in that also. So, thanks. I remember what I was going to piggyback onto that one question. Um, oh, I'm getting a call from my creditor. Okay. Um, Just pick up and say ponies. <laughs> ponies. Swag. <laughs> Click. Um, <laughs> There's silly Philly con only. Um, so I know a lot of the time that uh, voice actors will address this or when people ask them, when it comes to, uh, you were asked earlier about like different voicing types of different ranges and things like that, I hear one thing addressed a lot is that do not try and, uh, if you're doing something fan in, don't try to match or a particular voice, or whatever you're doing. Don't try and sound exactly like whatever the other person is um, when you're trying to uh, get into get practice in and stuff like that. Because, and even, I think Tara Strong has talked about this as well. It's like, if you're only trying to mimic voices, then you can't, like, you, you know, acting is a whole other aspect of it. It's not just the voice, it's the acting as well. Uh, would you say that? Yeah, like, for your demo reel... It's a big no-no if you just do imitations. You know, like, if you have a... You can have an imitation reel where you do, like, Peter Griffin and then Stewie and blah, 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 and Homer. But for your regular demo reel, that's kind of, like, really frowned upon. Because if they wanted that person, they would go, you know, they would ask for it or they would go get the original voice actor, you know? Uh, it's a totally different case if you're doing, like, a, you know, f fan dub of The Simpsons or something like that. But for... Um, for your regular demo, you know, <laughs> just uh, own stuff, you know, and maybe uh, sometimes what I do is I listen to a uh, something uh, like an, an anime or something and I try 
to do the voice from there, but then put my own little spin on it, and then record that for my demo. Okay, do we have any other questions? Any other questions at all? Feel free to raise your hand. All right, we got another one. Come up. Come on down. Do, 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 do. Yeah, I was just asking for, like, a tip. Um, <clears throat> how do you get, like, emotions into your voice? Because I notice that's a big problem for me when I'm trying to record voice lines for my friends. Yeah, voice acting is acting before it's anything else. So I, would, I focus more on the acting aspect than whether the voice fits or not. And then I listen back and then re-record if I need to. But for acting, uh, you really need to, like... It's a funny word because you're not acting like a character. You're becoming the character and, and, you know, doing things as them. So I think acting should be changed, like the word. <laughs> but um, really just focus on the character you're portraying and become them. And then things actually come naturally, like how they would react to certain situations and stuff. Focus on the one. If you're doing good at another character, that's great. But maybe take a break. Focus on that one for a while. And if you just work at it, like, even if you want to work at it for, like, you know, uh, 15 minutes every day, you will get better. Yeah. Thanks. Welcome. Yeah. I know, um, <clears throat> I know I was going to say something, and now I've forgotten again. Um, something, something. Anyway, I think we're sort of running down on time. Is that what you're telling me? Okay. Um, one more. All right. Last question, then we'll wrap up here. Solar Empire or New Lunar Republic? I knew this question was coming. <laughs> I don't know. I'm, I'm sure there are, like, I can see why people like Celestia, but I'm just not a huge honor, so I'm going to go with Luna. Yeah. Might want to remember what radio you're on. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. Her, her, uh, her, her royal majesty, Princess Celestia, uh, allow <laughs> to the moon. Uh, yes, yes. Do, do you like bananas? That is the question. Banana bag. Um, but uh, yeah. So I think that's. Pretty much it for us for the interview Q and A sort of thing with uh, Jesse. You know, thanks for coming to Silly Philly Con and thanks for being in the interview with Celestia Radio. We'll have it up on the YouTube channel and everything, and send you the link. You can spread it around. So. Great, thank you for having me. Any any last uh, any last sort of comments or anything before we let you go here? Um, everyone, just have an awesome time. Yee. Awesome. Cool. Well, thank you very much. All right. Much. All right. Much. All right. Much. All right. Much.